Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Welcome to Walking Through the Book of Matthew. I'm your host, Ruel Barkstow, and today we will be continuing our walk in the ninth chapter of the book of Matthew. So get your Bible, get your paper, get your pencil, wherever you keep the word of God, and we will finish our walk, or at least continue our walk through the book of Matthew. And tonight, we are entitling this lesson, I Can Do All Things, and It Only Takes a Touch. I can do all things, it only takes a touch. Now, you'll remember that uh, last week, uh, we looked at the book of Matthew, and, and in the ninth chapter, we see a lot of things going on, and, and Christ continues to do miracles. He, he's, he's doing things that, that not only create a big crowd, but he's doing things that, uh, that will allow man to see that th this man is different. This man is different. And because he's different, you know, when you're different, you, you always attract uh, opposition. You, you always attract both adversity. And so the Pharisees are starting to look at him differently. He's, he's blaspheming because he said he, he, he said he can forgive sin. And look at him. He, he's, he doesn't have scruples because he's hanging around with tax collectors and sinners. What's wrong with this man? Last week I said there was a storm coming. It wasn't the storm that he calmed on the ocean when he said, peace be still to the wind and the waves. No, this is another storm. It's a storm of the Pharisees that will eventually lead him to Calvary. And so let's, let's take a quick look at where we ended up last week. Last week we were in the beginning of the ninth chapter of Matthew. And... Uh, he had just gotten off the boat. Uh, he had, uh, in the previous chapter, told the wind to, to calm down, the waves to stop making noise. And, and now he's in a house and he's teaching. And, and these people bring a friend that, that's paralyzed and they can't get in because the house is too crowded. So what do they do? They climb up on the roof, tear a hole in the roof and, and drop their friend in front of Jesus. And Jesus says, your faith, he wasn't talking to the paralytic, he was saying, your faith has, has made this man, well, let me just read it. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. And when he says your sins are forgiven, the Pharisees say, uh oh, we got him now. He's blaspheming. Everybody knows that only God can forgive sins. But he's telling them something. There's a, there's, there's a new sheriff in town. There's, there's a new reality in town. And, and he's going to make that clear as we continue to read. And so then he, he looks at them and says, well, well, why are you entertaining such evil thoughts? Is it easier to say your sins are forgiven? Or to say, get up and walk. I've done both. And then he has the nerve to call Matt. Matthew, we, we talk, talked about last week, the, the, the tax collectors. Um, we, we, we told you that they, they were ripping off the people and, and they, were, they were seen as being unclean. They weren't allowed to go to the synagogue, the temple. They weren't allowed to associate with the people. And he calls Matthew to be a disciple, this publican, this man in, in the employ of the Roman government. And then to top matters off, Matthew is so happy about being called, he calls all his friends, uh, fellow tax collectors and sinners, and he has a big feast for Jesus. Now, not only are you blaspheming, look at you. You, you know, you're known by the company you keep, Jesus. But Jesus heard them complaining and moaning about his eating with the tax collector. It is not healthy it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. And, and then they get mad at Jesus because your, your, your disciples, they don't even fast right. You see, in the Old Testament, in the book of Leviticus, 
that the Lord told Moses on the 10th day of this seventh month is there's going to be a day of atonement. Hold a sac sacred assembly and deny yourselves. Present a food offering to the Lord. Do not do any work on that day because it is a day of atonement. And so the day of atonement was one day a year where the people would fast. They were commanded to fast by God. But as time went on and traditions began to be built, some people would say, well, you should fast when you're grieving or you, you should fast when you're just trying to get closer to the Lord. And by the time the Pharisees get a hold of this thing, you should fast every Monday and Thursday. Jesus, if your disciples were serious, they're not fasting like John's disciples. What's wrong, Jesus? Are you slack concerning righteousness? You know, my brothers and sisters, we must be careful about traditions. We must be careful to holding on to things just because that's the way our church does it. If it's not in the Bible, if God didn't tell us to do it, the Pharisees had built this thing up. And so if you weren't fasting on every Monday and Thursday, so you, you weren't you weren't serious. You weren't you weren't a real servant of God. Jesus lets them know, look, no man uh goes through all uh, when the bridegroom is here. Nobody's mourning and and going through all kinds of sadness. The, the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken away. Then they will fast. But I'm the bridegroom. I'm here now. There'll be a time when I won't be on this earth. There will be a time when I won't be walking with them. But while I am here. And then he goes on to make some analogies. You know, Christ was good at trying to, trying to show people a truth by allowing them to see everyday occurrences. No one sews a patch of, of unshrunk cloth on an old garment for the path for the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. In other words, when you have a an old garment and, and there's got a tear in it, you don't put a new piece of cloth so because when the, the new cloth shrinks, it'll tear the old cloth, making the tear worse. What's he saying? There's I, I'm the new cloth. But let me make that clearer to you. Neither do men pour new wine into an old wineskin. Because you see, when wine was poured into a wineskin, it would ferment and it would cause the, the skin to expand. But after so many uh, pours of, of wine, the, 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 the wineskin couldn't, couldn't expand anymore. And so you wouldn't continue to pour new wine into an old wineskin because it would burst. Christ is telling them, I'm the new wine. And you can't pour me into the traditions and the rites and the rituals and the sacrifices of the Old Testament. I'm the new wine. And you can't pour me into to the, the false religiosity of the Pharisees. I'm the new wine. And there will be a new testament. There will be a new covenant. And now... We get to the lesson for tonight. While he was saying these things, a ruler came and knelt before him. This wasn't just any, this was a ruler from the, the synagogue. This was, this was a religious ruler. This, this was probably maybe one of the Sanhedrin court came to him, said, Master, um, and he bows down before him. Well, there's a problem right there. Because if you know your word, you, you only worship God. You, you don't bow down. All right, turn with me to Revelations 22, verses 8 and 9. I'll give you a second to get it. Revelations 22, verse 8 and 9. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. But he said to me, don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophets and with all who keep the words of the scroll. Worship God, don't worship me. Turn with me to Acts the 10th chapter, verses 25 through 26. As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in reverence. But Peter made him get up 
Stand up, he said. I am only a man myself. In other words, worship is reserved for God. And yet this, this ruler of the temple, this, this, this Sanhedrin court member comes and, says, and falls down at the feet of Jesus. And said, my daughter, Lord, my daughter ha has just died. My, my, my daughter, she's, she, she's dead, Jesus. But come and put your hand on her. And she will live. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I, I've heard that he, he calmed the wind and the waves. I've heard that he healed the paralytic man. I, I've heard that he healed the man of leprosy. I, I've heard that he'd healed the blind man. I, I've heard that he healed from a distance when, when the centurion's servant was, was sick. I, I heard... This, this this girl is dead. This, this girl is sure enough dead, dead. While Jesus was saying this, a synagogue leader came and knelt before him and said, my daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her and she will leave, live. Jesus got up and went with him and so did his disciples. We're going to see about this thing. We're going to see what Jesus is going to do now. What? He, 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 this, this girl is dead, and, and he's going. what's he going to do? Just then, a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him. Wait a minute, wait a minute. When, when a woman was bleeding, she was unclean. She couldn't go to the, to the, to the, to the synagogue. She, she couldn't fellowship with her her family, she she was unclean. She couldn't be touched, I, I, and so she's she for twelve years she's been marginalized. For twelve years she's been misunderstood. For twelve years she's been misrepresented. For twelve years she's been mishandled, and 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 so she can't come to Jesus. Jesus, come and heal me, because this is my issue. No, she's got to make her way through the crowd. And she pushes and she crawls and, and she pulls until she's just out of reach and she lunges and she, she touches the hem of his garment. Because she believes I, I don't have, he doesn't have to say anything to me. He doesn't have to look at me. He doesn't have to say, woman, you are here. If I can just touch. Why? Because I, I understand in, in the Old Testament when the oil was anointed when the pre, on the priest's head, it would roll down to their garment and their garment would be, if I can just touch. She said to herself, if I can just touch his cloak, I will be healed. And she touches him. And Jesus turns and, and saw her. Take heart, daughter, he said. Your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed that moment. My brothers, my sisters, I hope you see what I see. That, that whether when the, when the four friends dropped the man down in, in front of Jesus, it wasn't the paralytic's faith, it was their faith. When the centurion said, "If, my, if uh, just speak a word and my servant will be healed, it wasn't the servant's faith, it was the centurion's faith. But this time, the woman that suffered in silence found a way to make her way to Jesus and touched his garment and it was her faith. My brothers and sisters, what I'm trying to tell you, that faith has to be in the equation somewhere. It, it, you might not have the strength to have the faith, but just, just have somebody to bring you to Jesus. You, you, you might not have a brother or sister, a son or a daughter that's not walking the way they should be walking. If you can have the faith, Jesus can, it just takes, somebody's got to have the faith for him to touch. Or to be touched. And she touches the hem of his garment. Take heart, daughter. Relationship. Your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed that moment. And then Jesus finally makes it to the, the synagogue leader's house and, and saw the noisy crowd. You know how we do when, when we have a funeral. There, there was music playing and there was people that were coming to mourn and, and the family and the friends were there and there was all kinds of commotion. So when Jesus entered the synagogue leader's house and saw the noisy crowd and people playing pipes, he said, go away. This girl is not dead but asleep. 
and they laughed at him. Whew. Jesus, I, I know you're a bad man. I, I, I know you've done some things. I, I, I've heard about the paralytic. I, I heard about the man with leprosy. I, I heard about the blind man. I heard about the winds in the way. But Jesus, you don't understand. This, this, are you crazy? This, this woman's dead. Now, you got to understand that the Levitical priests were not allowed to touch dead people. Why? Because that they, the dead people were certainly unclean. And touching a dead person would make you unclean. So what does he do, this man that had been worshipped? What does he do, this man had, who had calmed the winds and the waves? What does he do, this man who had had somebody healed just by touching his garment after the crowd had been put aside? He went in and took the girl by the hand. He touched her. And she got up. And news of this spread throughout all the region. This man not only speaks to the winds and the waves, not only heals the leper, not only heals from a distance, not only heals the blind, not only heals the paralytic that's dropped through the roof. He can raise from the dead. Who is this? This man that the Pharisees were now willing to plot against. He's a blasphemer. His disciples don't follow our rites and rituals. He doesn't follow your rites and rituals because you can't put new wine in an old wineskin. There's got to be a new testament. There's got to be a new covenant. There's got to be a new understanding. The, the, the rites and the, and the rituals and the sacrifices have to move out the way. There's a new sheriff in town. And this new share can not only heal the sick, but he can raise the dead. And this new wine will, be, will have to be put in new wineskins. But if you can get to this new wine, if you can touch him, or if you can have enough faith where he can touch you, you can be healed, my brothers and sisters. And it only takes a touch. Who, my goodness. I am so excited about our walk through the book of Matthew. Come and join us next week where he heals the blind and he heals the mute. And we will finish the ninth chapter, maybe move into the tenth. Listen, tell a friend. Tell an enemy about our walk through the book of Matthew. And maybe by the time our walk is over... <laughs> You and your enemy will be friends. I love you. God loves you more. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.